Well, we are into the fourth week of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and with Ukraine's surprising resistance, a lot of questions are being asked about Vladimir Putin's end game and even his state of mind. Well, earlier I uh, spoke with Abbas Galiamov, a former speechwriter for President Vladimir Putin, and uh, he gave us some insight into the inner workings of the Russian leader's mind, including where his ultimate interests may lie. His pure objective interest to raise the escalation to the level which doesn't allow the Russian public to breathe, which takes their breath away. They get so much scared by being surrounded by enemies. So Ukraine in this uh, case is instrumental. He is trying to show that it's not Ukraine with whom we're waging war. Ukraine is weak. We're waging war with America. This is our powerful enemy. America and NATO. So to make this uh, picture convincing, he is uh, trying to uh, de-objectivate, so to say, uh, mm. Ukraine, Ukrainian yeah. nation, Ukrainian state. But it's not that convincing after all, because we are seeing the Russians themselves, you know, rebelling like we've never seen before. Protests on the streets, right up to its local TV network. How much of that do you think will impact uh, Mr. Putin's decisions in terms of the legacy that he wants to leave behind? Well, definitely, uh, his regime will not leave further uh, than himself. Uh, definitely his legacy is undermined. The process of uh, this undermining, it's going on for at least four years, as I'm telling you, uh, and uh, the current war will speed up the process. Uh, definitely the anti-war sentiment will be growing. The opposition sentiment will be growing. It's no longer marginal, uh, which it was for, uh, for at least uh, 17 or 18 years. Now, I would say that the uh, nucleus of Putin's support is something like one third of the total number of voters, it's like 30%. Uh, the opposition, the core of opposition, they are like 30% too, maybe 27, 28, a little less, but they're absolutely comparable. The major part of the uh, population they are in between, they are so-called undecided. So far, while there is rally around the flag is still happening, they, uh, they are inclined towards uh, Putin. Right. But so they are not it... like, you know, unanimous and absolute supporters. Right. So I've got the golden question for you. What is going to make Putin stop this war? You know, what are the various scenarios that, you know, Putin can get out of this while saving face at the same time? Objectively, uh, the war is not in, t in his interest now. Quick victory like it was in 2014. That's what he was looking for. When he got into this uh, bloody war, which he cannot win, the time is working against him now. So he really understands that he made a mistake, that he, uh, he went much further than he should have done that. So he is ready to retreat. The only thing which he needs is some trophy which he would present to the Russian public or the Russian elites as like, look, I won, here is the trophy. As soon as he gets something which he perceives as like more or less convincing, he will immediately stop this because, again, uh, objectively, this is no longer in his interest. And uh, just very quickly before I let you go, if you get to meet your old acquaintance, Mr. Putin, in person, what would you say to him? Well, I'll just say, tell him, like, stop it. You, you've gone mad. You, you're, you're being so, so rational that you've gone mad. This is dialectic, stop it.